Hello YouTubers and my fellow computer nerds out there. Um, welcome to an entirely new and different type of video from me. We're going to do a series of videos which are quite different from anything I've done before. We're going to talk about retro computing in these videos. I've been bitten by the retro computing bug hard lately. I've uh, been wanting to get back, I've been wanting to get into it, uh, wanting to revisit my youth, so to speak, and play around with uh, computers that were uh, around when I was in high school, college, even grade school. So, uh, in this box is my first piece of retro computing hardware I have acquired. And this is going to be sort of, a, this part one video is going to be sort of an unboxing video. And we'll see what I've bought. Let's open it up. It was very well packed by the seller, I have to say. So what we have here is some serious retro computing hardware. This is an S100 single board computer made by Teletech called the System Master. And I saw this on eBay cruising for retro computing hardware and I just couldn't resist. I had to buy it. And you know when I was when I was just a kid in grade school, you know the uh, the Altair 8800 and the MSI 8080. They were, they were new things. They had the big boxes and the blinking lights and the switches and they just fascinated me. And I always wanted an S100 system. But you know, I was just a kid at the time. Couldn't afford it. My parents couldn't afford it. My parents didn't see why anybody would ever need a computer in the home anyway. So, um, there was just no way I was ever going to have one. Um, you know, I saw the articles in Radio Electronics. Saw the ads for them. Saw them in uh, some of the computer stores that were starting to pop up. And I just wanted one in the worst way. But there was just no way back then. But, uh, well, now I'm retired, got a little disposable income, got some time on my hands. Why not, right? Well, just to show you how bad I had the retro computing bug, I actually found this um, Altair 8800 with a Z80 processor emulator online that I could download and run on my own computer. And I did, and I just had a blast with playing around with it. It's, it's a lot of fun. It comes with CPM. It comes with a lot of old software built in and it's just a blast to play with. And I was I had a great time refamiliarizing myself with CPM and MBASIC and a lot of other stuff which I have not used at all since like high school. It's been that long. And uh, just had a blast with it. Um, now it is kind of weird running this on modern hardware like on my laptop with a three gigahertz processor because it is wicked fast. And I know that the actual vintage hardware is going to be dog slow. But still, I got a major nostalgia rush out of uh, playing around with this emulator. And it just made me want to have my own real retro computer all that much more. Even though I know it's going to be slow and, you know, it's going to be kind of a pain in the butt. But still, it's so cool. I mean, I just had so much fun playing around with this emulator. I, I, I just can't express how much fun I've had with it. And uh, it's, it's good that I've refamiliarized myself with CPM because I'm going to need that shortly once I get this uh, Teletech board up and, uh, up and running, hopefully. I, maybe I can have one of those big blinking light boxes. Well, the wife might not think that's a good idea. They take up a lot of space. So I got to thinking. Instead of buying one of those big systems, those are also very expensive, by the way, these days. They're collector's items. If you see an Altair 8800 or an MSI 8080, sn cheap, snap it up, because they are worth a lot of money, especially if they work. If they got a lot of cards in them, they're worth a lot of money. 
But, um, you know, I was cruising eBay and I saw that um, as well as all of the cards and the racks and whatnot that go into these S100 computers, um, there's also, you know, people selling a lot of individual cards out there. And this is a, a complete system on a card. You know, back when those computers first came out, you had to buy the processor card, you had to buy the memory card, you had to buy the I.O. card. Um, you had to buy, you know, any other function you needed, a floppy drive card, and pretty soon you had, you know, 10, 15 cards in a rack, and the lights would dim when you turned the thing on. But, um, you know, that was like in the 70s, and as we got into the 80s, when this board was made, um, they were miniaturizing things a lot more and consolidating a lot of functions into a few chips. So this is a complete computer on a single S100 board. So we've got the uh, Z80 CPU here. We've got the uh, we've got a Z80 DMA chip, Z80 serial I/O, Z80 parallel I/O, Z80 um, Z80 counter timer chip. We got floppy drive over here. Uh, we've got ROM here. We got 64K of dynamic RAM here. And we've got some resistor networks and a lot of 7.4 series glue logic and no doubt mostly for bus interface. Actually, this, this, this board actually has a PAL on it for, um, looks like decoding, for logic uh, decoding. Actually, there's a couple PALs on it. So this is actually a fairly advanced board for the time. Back in the early 80s, this was an advanced board. So I saw this on eBay and I thought, well, it's just a single board. You know, maybe I don't need the big box with the blinking lights and the switches and all the other stuff that goes with it that takes up a lot of space and costs a lot of money. Maybe I can just get the single board up and running. Maybe. I don't even know if this works. Um, the person who sold it to me doesn't even know if it works. But I don't have too much invested in it. I only paid 100 bucks. Uh, here's the, uh, here's the eBay auction I bought it off of. But if you look around on eBay, you'll find a lot of boards like this. Now, what led me to buy this particular board out of all the others? Well, number one, it was a single board computer. It's got everything on one board, which is, you know, nice. But also, um, there's a website out there s100computers.com here's a picture of the website and on that website they have a lot of information about this board in fact I was able to download the manual for this board and peruse it before I pulled the trigger on the purchase of this just to make sure that I could probably get this up and running hopefully the manual is just, it goes into incredible detail. It's like 57 pages long, and it just goes into incredible detail about how to uh, interface to this thing and get it running and what it will do. And uh, it has everything except schematics, which I haven't been able to find. I wish, I wish I could find schematics for it, but I can probably live without schematics and hopefully get the thing up and running. So... That was important, being able to find a manual for this thing, because not everything, not all the boards online had manuals available. And secondly, a lot of the single board computers online were S100 slave computers that expected to be part of a bigger system with a master computer controlling everything. Now, some of them you could supposedly configure to run as standalone um, single board computers, but I didn't want to have to deal with the extra headache of that. There's going to be enough headaches, I think, in getting this up and running without having to deal with the whole turning a slave into a master thing. So that's another reason I bought this. This is a system master. This is a master. It expects to be running the entire system, even if there's nothing else attached to it. So in theory, all I have to do is provide power to this thing and a serial port console and it should be up and running and then I can add other things over time as I figure out the issues here and how to connect things up 
Like it can control up to four floppy drives. It has parallel ports. It has at least two serial ports. Um, so, you know, it, it's got everything right here that's needed. Of course, after I bought it, I kind of started to thinking, you know, especially after it arrived and I got a look at it, I got to thinking, well, I may have bitten off a little bit more here than I thought I was gonna, because even getting power to this is going to be a little bit difficult. Because if we look in the manual here, let's see, here it is, power requirements, 8 volts at 2 amps plus 16 volts at 50 milliamps, minus 16 volts at 50 milliamps. That was pretty normal for an S100 power supply in, a, in an S100 card, card cage. Well, if you can find one of those for sale these days, you better bring the full wallet to buy it, because those are very expensive. And as for power supplies that output those voltages, they don't really exist anywhere. Um, I, and I have searched diligently, trust me. So, um, yeah, so I bought this thing, and I'm thinking, how the heck am I going to get power to it? Um, I need to do some more research on that, how to power it up. Um, I have some ideas. I don't know if they're going to work out or not. Um, and then... Again, you know, once I have a power supply or two or three that's going to provide the voltages this thing needs, how am I going to get the power into the board? You know, I don't want to solder wires onto this thing. I want to keep it as original as possible because, you know, if I get this thing up and running and I know for certain it works, well, hey, its resale value just goes up, right? And the older it gets, if it's working, the resale value goes up. So I don't want to do anything. I want to keep it original. So what I'm probably going to have to do is I'm going to have to buy an S100 edge connector so I can plug it onto the end edge plug it onto the fingers here and then run power to the appropriate um, lines that way so that I'm not actually altering the board. Um, and then I got to figure out how to talk to it um, through one of these serial buses. And it's got two serial buses. Um, because it's got two sets of level converters here. So I need to, need to figure out which of these connectors is the serial bus I need to talk to and how to wire it up between that and a, and a virtual terminal on, a, on a, like a laptop or something so that I can actually talk to this thing. Now in the manual it does say that this has auto baud rate detect um, with your terminal for everything from like 48 baud up to 9600 or something, all you have to do is just wire it upright and then hit carriage return on your terminal and it'll auto detect the baud and you're, you're off and running. Hopefully, hopefully that is still the case. Uh, we got this ROM chip here. I don't know if um, this is the original monitor ROM that's talked about in the manual. I really can't figure that out. Hopefully, nobody has put in a different monitor ROM. Hopefully this is what came with um, this board originally, and it's got that nice feature and a lot of other nice features in it still. I guess we'll find out once I get this thing powered up and try to talk to it. So, I've got a little bit of work ahead of me. Yeah, there's a little bit of buyer's remorse after I bought this when I realized all the effort that's going to have to go into getting this thing running. And then once I get it running, you know, I can't just leave it, you know, out in the open like this. I guess I could. I mean, it's very, very steampunky, I suppose. But, you know, it's not good for the electronics to be out exposed like this. I'm going to have to put it in some kind of enclosure. This is getting complicated. So I got power, RS-232 connection, enclosure. You know, it's, it's, it's really getting complicated. And, and, and I didn't think this through before I bought the thing. So there's a little bit of buyer's remorse there. I could put it back on eBay tomorrow and probably get my money back on it. But I think I'm going to enjoy the challenge of trying to get this up and running. Um, it'd be nice to have a Z80 system to play with again. Because that's what I cut my teeth on as a kid. Was 8080, 8085Z80 systems. I mean, they all work, you know, they all speak about the same language. You know, I got nothing against the Apples and the 6502s and the Kims and the Pet or the Commodores or the whatnot. 
It's just that I was never exposed to them as a kid. I, there was always a Z80 system or an 8080 system in my life, you know, that I was able to use. So, um, you know, it's, it's, it's the language I understand. So it would be really great to get one of these up and running. Maybe as I get deeper and deeper into this retro computing thing, maybe I will try to resurrect an old Commodore or, or an old Apple or something. Because I did use those to some extent. I had friends who owned them, and I played around with them a little bit. But um, it was pretty much Z80s and 8080s for me when I was a kid. All right, so that's pretty much it for Episode 1, the unboxing and the buyer's remorse. Uh, episode 2 will come along once I make some kind of progress on getting this thing up and running. And um, I'll show you that when it happens. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to see future videos in this series and, and other videos I do on other things like uh, recovering gold from e-waste, astronomy, astrophotography. I do videos on all kinds of stuff. So you can subscribe to see future videos as they come out. Uh, ring the little bell icon to be notified when they come out. Uh, give this video a like, a thumbs up if you found it at all interesting, um, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.